Never forgive, never forget. His words rang out across Yangon and other cities in Myanmar on Monday as tens of thousands of people took to the streets demanding a return to democracy. Demonstrations have continued unabated since civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi was ousted in a military coup on February the 1st. But they found renewed energy a day after the funeral of Mia Swate Swate Khaing, a young woman protester who was killed by police last week. We pay our respects to all the heroes who died from protesting against the military dictatorship. We swear that we will continue the civil disobedience movement until we succeed. We swear that we will continue protesting against military dictatorship until we can get rid of this regime, according to the wish of Mia Thwate Thwate Kang and the wishes of all the generations in this era. More have died since and officials are warning of deadly consequences if the protests don't stop. Protesters are now inciting the people, especially emotional teenagers and youths, to a path of confrontation where they will suffer loss of life. But the people are undeterred. Trying to raise the economic toll for the regime, they blocked highways on Monday and called a countrywide strike. Workers and labor unions downed their tools and joined marchers in many cities. Some international chains like KFC, Food Panda and Grab also halted operations in solidarity with the demonstrators. And one Myanmar-focused investment group, Yoma Strategic Holdings, has halted trading of its shares in Singapore. International pressure is also mounting, with many countries threatening tougher sanctions against Myanmar's military leaders. We will use all diplomatic channels that are still available to work towards a de-escalation in Myanmar. But at the same time, we will also prepare ourselves for the eventuality that we don't succeed in contributing to the escalation and, as a last resort, reserve the right to use sanctions against the military regime. But the junta controls many of the country's businesses. Targeting them could impact ordinary citizens who work for these companies. And Asian partners account for a majority of international trade and foreign investments. So choking the regime financially is difficult for Western governments. It leaves the people with little choice but to sacrifice their livelihoods for the sake of democracy. Mubin Nasir, TRT World. For more on this, Dr. Gareth Price joins us now from London. He's a senior research fellow of the Asia-Pacific program at Chatham House, who's been following developments in Myanmar. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Now, local media in Myanmar have described these latest protests as the biggest to date since the military takeover on the 1st of February. Why are these protests gaining such broad support? <laughs> Look, I think Myanmar's in, in a pretty dark place. I mean, the, they had a general election in November, and it's pretty clear that the vast majority of the population wants a government led by Aung San Suu Kyi and the National League for Democracy. The military has very little justification for having taken over. Um, there's strength in numbers, and protesters so far haven't been as you say, put off from protesting by the military threats of violence. Um, on the one hand, so the economy is coming to a standstill, uh, so there'll be economic pressures on the military, but at the same time, the military has said it's not unwilling to use force against demonstrators. And the military junta has so far failed to stop these daily protests and the civil disobedience movement calling for the reversal of this coup and the release of Aung San Suu Kyi. Do you see any signs at all that perhaps the military rulers might listen to some of these concerns and make some concessions? There's no evidence so far. I mean, I think one thing that's quite interesting is that in this election and in the previous election five years ago, um, even in military-controlled, military-dominated areas, people, presumably members of the military and their families, were voting for the National League for Democracy and not voting for military rule. So whether there's some kind of schism within the military, again, we've never seen that historically. Um, it looks as of now the military is happy to use repression to quell the protests, but that's why the numbers are a significant challenge to the military's rule. 
As you say, these latest uh, protests and the call for a general strike could uh, give the military rulers an economic impetus to perhaps listen to their concerns. But we also have countries like the United States, uh, many countries across the EU and elsewhere who are threatening sanctions against Myanmar as well, which would only further uh, add pressure to their economy. Do you think that might have any sort of an impact on their decision? I think Western sanctions must have been, they must have factored in that I was hugely likely. Um, I think unless there were UN sanctions, which would require China to change its approach towards Myanmar, the, the military in Myanmar will go back to being more reliant on China and to whatever extent it is bailed out or China as its main trading partner. And similarly, other countries in Asia, because they're wary of increased Chinese influence in Myanmar. So India, countries from ASEAN and so forth are unlikely to follow the, the Western sanctions route. Can you remind us, what rationale did the military use to seize power in the first place? So the general election was held in November last year. The military claimed that there was a great deal of fraud involved, even though outside observers had said, by and large, the elections represented the election outcome with the National League for Democracy winning reflected the will of the people. I mean, some of the irregularities were to do with the election being unable to be held in certain parts of the country because of conflict. Um, but independent observers viewed the results as largely largely indicative of, of people's will. The military wanted an inquiry to be held into this. The, um, the sort of ombudsman that looks into election malpractice refused. And so the military decided to prevent parliament from sitting and, and took over and claiming that it wants to rule for a year and then it will preside over what it's called free and fair elections in a year's time. But it would seem self-evident that they don't want Aung San Suu Kyi and potentially the, any of the National League for Democracy being part of those elections. In the meantime, the world will continue to watch developments in Myanmar. Dr Gareth Price, thank you again for joining us from London.